Welcome to Yokomo, an online course on competence-based development for youth workers. How to conduct self-assessment of competences. Competence models enable you to analyze your own competences and address professional challenges. A competence model is a good basis for self-assessment, peer support and peer review. It gives impulses that will encourage you to try out new things and invest in personal and professional development. When you start working with any competence model, you need to get familiar with it and with its assessment approach from the beginning to the end. A number of competence models focus on several dimensions of competence, such as attitudes, knowledge, skills and behaviours. It is recommended to start your assessment from behaviours in specific youth work situations, because behaviours are what you can observe. By focusing on them, you should be able to recognise competences in action and explore whether your competence level is sufficient for your work. After the initial self-assessment of behaviours, you may continue your assessment focusing on attitudes, knowledge and skills in a chosen competence area. You will notice that some are clearer than others and some are more important for you and your practice. Start with the ones that are clear and essential for you. Leave the others aside for later and remember that you can conduct the self-assessment more than once. Your understanding of the competences will improve during the repeated self-assessment process and you will gradually get more into the competence model. Some competences may mean very little to you when completing your assessment for the first time. That's okay. Note that you can better understand the meaning of competences when you connect them with your practice and experience. And with time, you will start seeing more and more links between the necessary competences and your practice. When performing a self-assessment for the first time, and depending on preferences and personalities, some might go for a higher or lower rate compared to the later assessments performed. This doesn't mean that you lose or gain your competences. Rather, it is often a sign that you actually started to understand competence better and assess it more realistically than before. Still, some people tend to be too critical to themselves, even in repeated self-assessment attempts. If you are one of them, try to ignore this critical voice and be as realistic as possible. Competences are always connected to a specific context and roles. This can make them challenging to explore and assess. You need to view competences in relation to your youth work context. For example, one of the European Training Strategy competence models focuses on competence areas necessary for international youth work. When assessing your behaviours in relation to a specific competence or area, look for examples where you have demonstrated that competence in action. Reflect how often you behave in a similar way. Think and describe how you applied that competence in a youth work situation. Identify what you are good at and perhaps what challenges you experience in a specific competence area. Collect and add examples of evidence that supports your assessment. This can be feedback received from other people, evaluation of your work, results of your work in any media format, references to achievements and formal acknowledgement of your competence. Finally, it is important to see competences together as a whole and not individually. And so, when you have gained some clarity within one area, you can complete your self-assessment in all competence areas of the model. Curious? Wondering? Give it a try. The insights you will get are often a good motivation to continue and explore further your personal and professional development. We hope this video contributed to you learning about the competence-based development for youth workers.